Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be showing you what I learned about soldering as a beginner and information that I've gathered and tests that I've done and equipment that I bought that didn't work and equipment that I bought that did work. So if you are thinking about starting jewelry making or you're curious about soldering and soldering irons, this is a video for you. So without further ado, I want to walk you through the process and how it all started and how I ended up with things like that. So I had an idea to start making jewelry that is very organic looking. Like I wanted to look as if it just happened on its own, like the rings were just happening in nature organically and uh, wasn't they, they wouldn't look man's made. That was like something I wanted to do for a while. And I couldn't find anything online that would look like that. Um, and I realized that the only way to do it would be by soldering. And I've done, I've made jewelry before. You know, the one that you um, wrap, the wire wrapping, the one that you link chains and using, you know, just um, kind of uh, materials available for you and you just put them together with no soldering and no iron work at, at all. And because I was afraid of this, like I didn't know where to start. I don't know if you're the same way. But anyway, um, I've done some research and I've and I've bought my first um, soldering iron and I'll link it. Um, I'll take a, I'll show a picture of it. I don't want to be shaming the brand. Um, maybe I'll blur out the brand. But it was very inexpensive. It was twenty seven dollars and it came with um, lead free wire. Not this one, but it was like a kit. And this was the one that you feed through the wire. And I couldn't feed the wire, and it was in, um, remitting so much, emitting so much fume so much fumes so I uh, realized it's probably not the best I was able to manage to make couple rings and I will show you so for instance this ring I will get a, I will get a close-up this is like an amethyst ring with some um, uh, rhinestones and lead free wire so I managed to do that and I managed to make another um, ring with that that was my first ring so I got so excited because I didn't even realize that the things will turn out so rock solid. I was happy that it was very sturdy. And I got so excited that apparently I can melt metal, which is so crazy that apparently we are humans can melt metal. It's insane to me. So anyway, I used the iron and it was like so terrible in the way that it was not heating well. And I feel like, I think after my third or fourth piece, it completely burned down. The, the tip of the iron, this part, you know, like this part right here, I'll show you. So like um, this part right here, it burned burned out com completely. It had a hole in it. So I was like, well, it's probably not good. And it was not picking up soldering wire anymore. It was not picking it up. Like, you know, when you create a bead, if you don't know, I'll explain. But basically the bead that is uh, supposed to happen from this guy melting that you can carry and attach onto something, like it, the, the tip, it, it kind of um, stays on the tip here and it wasn't holding it, like it was, it was dropping, you know, it was breaking, it was, it was terrible. So it wasn't holding it, it was just, it was just dropping it. So that's how I knew it's probably bad. And then I did some more research and I went on Amazon, I know, maybe not everyone enjoys Amazon because we're not supporting local business, but I went on Amazon and I found this guy and I'll I'll link the uh, model down below and I will talk to you about it. I don't even know the name. I don't remember the name. I don't even know I can read it. So I'll link it all for you. But this is crazy good. So it was a couple things. So there are a couple mistakes. Let me tell you the mistakes that I made. So I bought a cheap iron, which was $30, um, 27. And this one, I believe um around 58 or 85 i'm not prepared for this video but i will link it down below for you so you will see it's under a hundred dollars okay but it was a little more expensive than the one that i got at the beginning and then the other game changer was the flux so i'm all scattered let's talk from the beginning if you're 100 a beginner this is what you need to do in order to make anything while soldering with soldering is basically you need flux because without flux uh, the wire won't flow the wire won't melt 
um, and then you need an iron, uh, the um, a soldering iron, and you need the lead-free wire. I'm using lead-free because I am making pieces that I wear. I know that I, I watched some videos where they said that it's okay to use um, a solder, solder wire that has lead as long as you don't wear the pieces. But I try to buy lead-free fire wire because I am paranoid, you know, when it comes to that. So you will need that. You will probably need, um, will definitely get yourself something that will protect you. So I wear the gargles and I also wear a mask. I always wear a mask when I uh, work with uh, soaring because the fumes are happening much better when you have a better flux. So, and if we're going to talk about flux, um, basically, this is the one that I started with. Um, it was pretty inexpensive, I think under four or five dollars or under six dollars, something like that. And I'll show you guys pictures if the camera can catch it up. And I didn't like it because that was remitting so much fumes probably saying this so wrong so much fume forgive me um so that didn't work for me uh plus the bad soldering iron but then i switched to this guy and i am obsessed i will link it for you as well i will mm, insert the picture it's stainless glass flux all purpose and i'm obsessed because you need a tiny bit of it and it almost has no fumes at all and it's very important because we don't want to be inhaling those fumes the other thing you would need as i mentioned you would need a lead free a solder i got this one on amazon as well um i'm learning so forgive me if i sound uh like i'm not so professional in it but this is basically i figure out the things and the tools and the techniques that bring me the results that I need and I've been enjoying soldering instead of struggling and just wanting to give up so this one is really good and the trick that I learned that apparently from one of the YouTube videos actually that in order to work when you work with 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 soldering you can just kind of shape it this way that way it stays um, and it holds up the wire and you can just get a little bit of the wire uh, what because it's shaped that way it's, it's so much easier to access it then rather than it being like any other shape like I feel like this works um, perfect for me and I've been making few rings and I have so much more here um, left so this was n this was very ex was, was pretty expensive it was 30 something but it has like, I've used it a lot and I made a lot of pieces and it looks like I haven't used any so I feel like this is a good investment you know another thing that you would need and I use all the time is the third arm arm third hand third hand I think uh, I got this one uh, I think off Amazon again I will also link it down below and it has two little clips here where you can attach stuff to and I love it it helps me so much the only thing that I would say if you work with larger stones because sometimes from, from what I do, I wrap stones with the copper wire, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, these guys are not as wide as uh, I would want them to be, so sometimes big stones uh, can get in, in there, you know what I mean? They, they, I can put them in and they would shoot across through, <laughs> so don't do that. And that's why you have to wear glasses, because you never know where, you know, maybe this thing would get a little loose or, I don't know, or just shoot something across the room, like you don't want to do that. So. I highly suggest wearing protective eyewear. So this is amazing and it's pretty, um, it has a lot of weight, so it's pretty um, stable. And what I do sometimes, I would um, hold one piece in here, if I'm working on like a ring, I would hold a, a ring part in here while I'm holding another part of uh, another piece in the other hand. And that way this one's cooling off, sorry for a car, this, the way this one is, be, is cooling off while I'm working on that one and I would rotate to save time, right? And then like be careful because um, the pieces get really hot. I didn't realize that in order to, mel to melt metal, you must be a goddess and you must have crazy human powers and those powers come with cost of heat. So be careful. Anyway, uh, another thing I will be walking you through, this is the last thing that I'm using and it uh, been helping me so much. This is the uh, copper wire. So the copper wire is beautiful because without it, you can't attach anything to anything. 
you can attach um, solder to solder, but if you want to attach a piece of stained glass, if you want to attach um, natural stone like amethyst, like in this example, like as you see, and I will, I will also show you uh, in the, on the screen, but if you want to wrap um, if, you wanna, if you want to attach amethyst to metal, it's not gonna just glue. You have to have like a, like a connector. You have to have, like you know when you make a burger, there's bun, there's dressing, and then there's meat. <laughs> you need to have a dressing for it to all stick together. Stupid, stupid, stupid example. Anyway, moving on. Anyway, so um, I will, I'm, so this one, so back to that. So. This one was really inexpensive as, uh, again. Um, I think it came in instead of two and I've been using it nonstop and it, it, it looks like I haven't even touched it. So this is copper tape, highly conductive, uh, trade grade adhesive, indoor, outdoor use, long lasting. It's two by uh, quarter inch, 36 yards. 36 yards, it will last you forever. And the way it works, so I'll show you, uh, you will just, um, um, so it's, it's very easy to tear and like you don't have to have scissors. I do sometimes use scissors for clean a cut, clean a cut but you can just rip it like this and there is um, a side here that the white paper comes off. So the white paper comes off and this part is sticky. So you see this? So basically I should be holding like uh, you know, pliers or something, so it looks more professional. Let's do that. Uh, we'll get to pliers in a minute. Mm, so, the pliers. So, basically, let's just make it all professional looking, shall we? So, there you go. So, this is the piece of uh, copper, and one side is sticky. I'll show you right now on my hand. Okay. So, you see, it's it sticks. It stays. It's probably not good for my skin, but I will do it for you guys. It's okay. So, basically, it's, it sticks. And it's really great because that's what you need. You need a little bit of adhesion to work with natural stones, for instance. So um, let me get a natural stone. So this ring right here, I know it's not for everybody, but I love it. And I've been wearing it every day for two months now. And it's pretty out there, okay? But that's very me and, you know, I'm a little weird, so. I like that stuff. Anyway, you would need that um, copper wire in order to adhere stuff onto metal. Without that, it won't work. So basically, again, from my experience, if you're gonna put um, a flux onto this and then you put some solder, it's still not gonna work. It hasn't worked for me. You need a little like guide. You need a little, <laughs> a little translator basically, who's gonna translate, I don't know, you need a little help from this guy. So basically, what you would do, you would wrap your piece around, this is, so I've been touching it and it became very greasy and you need to think about it when you make jewelry. So when you peel off that white part of the, of the copper uh, tape, try not to touch it with your hands because your hands, no matter how much you wash them, they're gonna have a little bit of grease and if you touch it a couple times, it becomes less adhesive. And what could happen, I wish someone told me those tips. Um, so there you go. I think you guys, this is everything I know. Anyway, so basically, um, if you are gonna touch it too much, it becomes less adhesive and even if you manage to stick onto, to stick this thing onto the stone, what could, and you manage to put solder on top, the metal part, right? What could happen, it could um, uh, basically become loose and it could fall off. So, you know, that's what you need to do. Just be careful not touching it too much. So basically, I'm gonna wrap. Um, I'm gonna cut a little bit, rip a little bit of the tape off, and then I'm going to peel it. And you see how I'm not touching it, so it's fresh. And then I'm going to just adhere it to the base of my stone, and I'll go around the a circumference at the bottom of the of the bottom of the stone, and I will make sure. I wrap the whole thing in it so and that's basically this is your first step so let me show you so this is the first step that you do you you are carefully wrapping it at the place where you want the copper wire to be uh, because like if, if this will be the the top of the ring I would need to work with the bottom right to basically 
uh, put solder right here. And so I would cover the whole thing in that copper wire and I would use my pliers to go in and maybe actually using the other side of pliers and I would go in and make sure I tuck everything in. So basically doing some of that. Sometimes I would do um, side motions, sometimes I would literally poke things and kind of place it so it's perfect so there's no gap between the copper wire and your the stone that you're working with otherwise it can fall off so it's very important it should be very very snug you'll do the whole thing and after that um, you basically would so this is this is like a crucial step if you want to mount a stone to um, the base and then what you would do you would just um, use some flux and I will talk about how to apply apply flux right now. You would use some flux and then you would use some solder and you have your soldering iron um, turned on obviously and hot and ready to go and you would place the stone somewhere where it's not gonna fall off. You'd wear your protective glasses and you will make sure it's secure, there's no babies or dogs in the room, you know, the windows are open and you will start adding solder uh, with a soldering iron with flux. So let's talk about flux really quickly. So I have no idea what flux is made of. Um, I'm scared to find out, but um, I will tell you um, how I apply it myself. So I got this um, and I'm really happy about it. It looks so cool. It looks like I'm such a professional. I love it and it was not expensive at all and uh, what I keep here is basically uh, my scissors and other tools which we'll talk about like sanding tools we'll talk about it in a minute and then some you know pliers and stuff like that for cutting things and uh, and then some more uh, tweezers and stuff like that so that's what I use it for it makes me feel like I'm a professional silversmith anyway um, I use a brush and this bottle came with the brush, I believe. I'm 99% 99, 99 sure it came with that, with the bottle came with this. So what was amazing about this is that uh, it's a synthetic brush and you can use any brush. I think synthetic is good because it's not gonna go bad. But all I do, so when you when this thing comes, um, it's gonna have a protective seal, you will remove it. I don't know if you need to shake it. I usually just shake it really quickly. And then it's like a baby safe, so no one's gonna drink it. Don't drink it, it's very poisonous, please. This is, you know, don't try to do that. And then this is just, it's very li liquid-like. It's very clear um, substance. So if I'm gonna pick it up and show you, if I can get a drop, you see, it's just clear. And it's very, it's not viscous at all. It's literally water consistency. So if you're drinking something, try not to drink when you are soldering, but don't confuse it. Like, please, you know, that's pretty dangerous. Um, and it's made, probably made in US, USA, which is good to know. So whenever I, I work with soldering, I will have uh, like a paper towel, I don't have it here, but I will have a paper towel so the residue from this will be just resting in the paper towel and I kind of would, I would try to keep this bottle closed. Like I would use a little bit and I'll close it because I don't want to be inhaling those fumes when I don't need to. And this is enough. Like brush that is a little bit damp, it should be pretty wet, it's pretty wet. Um, it will last you for a couple things. You know, if you feel like you need more, um, couple applications what I mean you can use more but basically one loaded brush is perfectly fine to apply for the whole thing you don't need to be your eyes from my experience you don't need it to be soaked in water but not in water in flux but you need it to be evenly covered just make sure you brush it a couple times you know it's just it's very easy you brush it you rest it you lock the thing you don't smell it maybe put a brush away you're wearing a mask I know it's uncomfortable, sometimes your gargles get uh, fogged up, but you know, it, and I use them and use a um, uh, mask whenever I'm soldering. When I'm not soldering and I need to get in and see what's going on, I will take everything off. But just please be careful. Anyway, um, so that's what you would do. You would apply a little bit of flux and then you would roll out this um, a, a solder that is uh, lead free. Um, like that like as I showed you which is super convenient and that's it and it's available for application and um, You're just gonna use your iron to get the solder onto 
I will walk you through probably how to um, do the whole process. Uh, I will probably film a video like that. But I just wanted to talk to you about things that I got and that worked for me. If you have no idea how to start in soldering and you've been wanting to, but you know, but we're scared to do so. So I'll tell you the amount of money this whole hobby will cost you because I feel like people don't talk about that. And I will tell you, this will cost you around, realistically, this will cost you around $150 top to set up thing where you would get um, a lead-free wire, you'll get the equipment that will last you forever for a long time, the equipment, uh, this protective equipment, um, uh, soldering solution, flux solution, copper wire and few stones and few bases, I think you can get away with $150. So if you've been thinking about a Christmas gift for yourself and you've been wanting to do soldering, I think this is not too terribly expensive gift for yourself. And I like to invest in gifts like that because um, they can bring money back because you're kind of investing in a craftsmanship and a tool and in something that you can potentially sell or you can make beautiful jewelry that you can give to your um, relatives and you don't have to go and buy uh, Christmas gifts for them or whatever because you made it yourself. I feel like this is a very good hobby because um, it will give the money back basically. It's an investment. So let's talk about the start of the show which is the soldering iron and I'll put a timestamp because if you guys are only curious about great soldering iron to start with, the one that actually works, I'll walk you through. So, it's the name of the brand is. Um, Yihua, I think. I don't know how to read this. The name of the brand is Yihua 939D. Um, this is a little cute little retro looking box. They sell them in black and green. I am not associated with the brand with 62 subscribers, so please don't tell, don't think that I'm selling something to you. This is from my experience and I'm loving it. And if you are struggling and been hating soldering, this is the boy. So it um, has a very strong plug, much better than the other one that I, three prone, three prone plug, I think it's called. So I think it's much safer. I'm not an electrician that is coming later on in my life. <laughs> basically, this is basically going to be, I feel like safer than a two prone plug for something like that, the equipment like that. Anyway, I don't know, electricians comment below if I'm saying something uh, legit here. But anyway, this is goes obviously into the outlet. I And um, so it's plugged in, but it's not turned on. There's a uh, on off button here which you're just gonna turn on, and then the light comes on, and it's looking very retro and scientific. What I usually do, I'll tell you um, right away, I don't, there's a knob that basically controls fe temperature fever. Anyway, what I do here is basically, uh, what, I, what I do, I'll tell you right away, um, I turn the temperature basically um, like a quarter up. I, this is a temperature controlling soldering iron. I think one of the main things that I forgot that I left out of the conversation. It's so bright, I'm sorry. Um, so it's important because it depends on, uh, because different temperatures are for different soldering wires and stuff like that. I don't want to get into details because I'm not an expert on that. All I know that this thing can get really hot and it does exactly what I need it to be doing at a certain temperature. And I will show you how I, how I get there, how I set up the thing. So just want to let you know, so this is also comes in with a soldering iron, obviously, and they also give you tips. And I've been using the same tip for, I don't know how many rings I made. One, two, three, four, five rings I made, I used the same soldering uh, tip. And they have multiple. I haven't even gotten a chance to use the other ones. Um, and it's been working. It didn't burn. I care for it, for it, and I will tell you how I care for it, which I've learned from um, some YouTube videos and some Google research that I've done and manufacturing um, recommendations, how I care for this. But basically, so this thing has the on off button. It has different uh, temperature thing uh, set where you can uh, track your temperature by Celsius or Fahrenheit. I don't understand Fahrenheit, but I think it is in Fahrenheit right now. I don't know. But anyway, um, 
so and then it has a station it's it's not connected to anything it's just a, it's just a metal station and it has a soldering uh it has a, it has a cl cleansing station which is amazing and i'll tell you why while the thing is heating up just keep your iron in the station it's very convenient it doesn't fall off it's the perfect angle whoever designed it i love them anyway and this whole kit comes with a sponge and you also have to uh wet, wet the sponge a little bit and squeeze all the water and keep it on the table and basically the way you would do it you would clean uh, the tip and then you would go onto the uh, uh, sponge which is damp and you would just kind of uh, also clean it with water which is like so counterintuitive because it's electricity so I'm so scared I was so scared to do this but it worked and then okay my camera died as you know as it happens in a YouTube world anyway so so this thing comes with this station where the iron rests and it's also perfect for cleansing the tip because if you don't cleanse the tip it will oxidize and it's very very important to cleanse it and then condition it before you use it every single time if you if you and again if you feel like your solder is um floating too much if it has uh, if it's dripping, if it's too melty, just adjust the temperature to a lower setting. If it's not enough, you know, bring it up. You kind of will know where your range is um, by just doing it. So basically, right now we're gonna condition the tip. So yeah, every single time I'll be done using an iron, I would come here and I would cover it. I will place a bit of solder. So this is still very hot. All you have to do you're just gonna have to place it back in here and then use the lid that comes with this to, you know, to make sure there's no vapors or whatever coming out of this and uh, we're just gonna place it back right here. And it's ready for the next use. You would unplug it. Um, I would usually kind of clean the sponge a little bit. I've been using it for some time, so it's a little dark. And then you would unplug it and then you store your iron in a safe place away from kids until you're ready to do the next soldering session so let's talk about the if you're still here <laughs> let's talk about the fun part what have I made what have I made that um, is making me fall in love with soldering and what have I made that I'm so excited about and that I've gotten so many compliments already and some people already want to order some rings from me. So I've made stuff that is a little bit out there. So little disclaimer, it's not your traditional jewelry, it's a little out there. So the first thing I made is this beautiful ring, um, as you guys saw. Um, and another thing I will tell you that I wanted to test it these before I sell them because I hate more than anything in the world when I buy a piece of jewelry and in a week or so it is tarnished and I just want to cry and it's a waste of money and it's a pollution for the earth for no reason because you just end up throwing a piece away and it's unacceptable it's shameful for everyone I cannot do this so I've tested this on my ring and I wore it everywhere I wore it in humid places I wore it um, I washed hands in it multiple times I used soap detergent I used all kinds of things and this thing didn't even tarnish like it's perfect nothing happens to it which means this um, lead free solder is good then this was like maybe the fourth piece I made the first one I ever made was this one and I'll do a better um, demonstration but this is the ring that I made it was first I made the little pendant of con I connected those four pieces of crystal together and then I used a base later on I wrapped the base with that copper wire as I showed you guys and I attached them together so this is kind of um, a, you know an interesting piece um, you can totally use it as a protection when you walk somewhere late at night you know you can punch someone with it, so I like that. All my rings are like that. They're like serving both purposes, the cuteness and the protection. So, okay, let me walk you through another one. So the second one I made after the silver, and this is just quartz, regular clear quartz. So was this one, and this one is cute. Um, it's a little more on a uh, lighter version. It's very Game of Thrones, you know? <laughs> 
it's very it's very Game of Thrones, and uh, it has like a little cross, and this is just a crystal, and I attach some copper wire, and I did some soldering, and I attached some crystals to it. I think one of the uh, one of the crystals f fell off, rhinestones fell off, but I will fix it. It's 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 fine. This was my second, third. This is my third ring that I made. I think it's one of my favorites. Actually, I love the way this turned out. I will show you that in a more of a flattering light on the dark gray I will show this to you in a more of a flattering light on, against the black background uh, it's beautiful it's very lightweight compared to my other ones it's more elegant I think this is a perfect combination it's something that people can wear it's not as big you know it's pretty big but and it's perfect I'm, I don't think you can see right now but I'll just try to show that you can see um, the gradient of uh, amethyst through it and it's just beautiful I really happy with this ring okay so I got a phone call I'm sorry and the last um, few rings I'll show you so the uh, one of the weirdest rings I made was um, was was this ring um, is definitely out there and uh, basically it is definitely not even for me to wear it's for photo shoots because you can poke your eye or someone else's eye out and <laughs> two recent ones I made they're a little bit out there definitely they were inspired by Christmas so this was this ring it's um so this was this ring and it's pretty crazy alien looking made out of real coral and this one is like more of a uh, you know everyday wear <laughs> it's missing few corals so I will be adding more but you know I like that it's in the inside is very nice I use the base and then I cover it with solder it's a silver base and the same here and the same thing here same thing here it is um, very nice and smooth on the inside and it's very uh, rough and crazy looking on the outside to sum this whole thing up, it was kind of a tutorial slash my um, things and feelings on soldering. I just want to talk to you about one last thing. I know this video is super long, but uh, very often whenever you solder, um, metal kind of forms the way it wants to and it's not smooth. It's As you can see, there's a rough surface, which I'm all for. I love the rough, raw surface, but sometimes it's too rough and it can hurt you. You can cut yourself. It's, it's, it's super sharp. So to handle the sharp pieces, like right here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a sharp piece right here. To sharp, to smooth them out, you'll just use some kind of set of tools that will help you. I forgot the name of it in English, but basically you find them on Amazon or whatever. It's a kit for jewelry, for sending, sending kit for jewelry. You can type and you'll find it. And just very carefully, and very carefully without scratching your pieces, you can smooth things out. And the little tip that I have for you, if you don't want to accidentally um, scratch your stone, which I have unfortunately in the past, put a piece of duct tape around the stone area so whenever you do your work and you're sanding it and you're polishing it you're not accidentally polishing the stone because it's yeah, it will be so sad when you have a beautiful ring and especially if you're using something like not corals and more expensive pieces if you have access to i don't know diamonds and you want to sort of diamonds this way people are probably gonna cringe but you know any any stones that are a little bit more precious than this um, I suggest taping it. I've made a mistake and I've scratched a couple pieces and I'm very careful and do that. So anyway, this is it. I hope this video helps. I hope that I um, helped you guys if you wanted to start a jewelry adventure but you haven't. And just to sum it up, I will tell you this. So again, it's gonna cost you around $150 to buy equipment and other things like a minimal minimal set uh, to start to start soldering. Um, so it's also good because this hobby can pay back. Uh, definitely meditative for me, uh, but also you can pay back because you can start selling your pieces or you can give them as gifts and that is amazing. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, I'm Eugenia, I'm an artist. I like to explore different mediums and express myself through different mediums and I like to learn new things almost every day. That's my passion. So if you're into stuff like that, um, this is the channel for you. I'm gonna put on all my rings 
all my crazy rings and I'm gonna go and have a cup of coffee guys have a lovely day I will see you around I'll see you around for more cool stuff but for now bye bye <laughs>